Hello, hello, more dimmers here and welcome to the fifth day of Skilling Open 2020 and second day of the quarterfinals. And now very interesting situation because out of four players who won the first day, first mini matches in, in this quarterfinals, none of them actually delivered the final blow and win uh, in the second day. We needed uh, three tie breaks and two Armageddons to actually see the four uh, semi-finalists. So this was very interesting situation and I will show you uh, all the brackets, all the scores, what just happened in the quarterfinals at the end of this video. So uh, check it out, stay until the end if you are interested. And also I would like to show you now one of the games, decisive games. And Levon Aronian, who's gonna play as white, plays against Jan Nepomniashi, who's gonna play as black because a lot of commentators said this is probably the weirdest position, chess position in the chess history. I'm not sure about that. However, it was definitely the weirdest I've ever seen uh, in my life. And I, uh, you know, already analyzed a lot of games. So this is definitely a very, very interesting. So without further ado, let's see what happened um, on the board. We have C4 and C5. So a um, symmetrical variation of the English opening. Knight C3, Knight F6. And now we have G3, Fianchetto variation. Uh, we have also d5 immediately c takes on d5 knight takes on d5 and now of course we don't um, exchange these knights immediately but rather bishop g2 first so this is the main idea here we have knight c7 now and after d3 e5 so uh, what do we have on the board look at this if english opening is reverse sicilian now black also can play marozzi bind against the you know reverse sicilian so we have reversed Marozzi bind. For those you don't know, Marozzi bind in the Sicilian is actually e4 and c4 taking under control d5. So here we have the opposite colors variation. A white have one extra tempo. However, black can play Marozzi bind very solid taking under control d4. So now it's not that easy to play e3 and d4. This is the main idea. And if you are looking for the Marozzi bind as, as white, it's very easy to actually find the all ideas. But against English opening, you go for the Rubinstein variation. Uh, so Rubinstein variation with this Fianchetto variation and Rubinstein uh, variation with this reverse Marozzi bind. It's, uh, it's, it's a bit of headache with the theory, but this is where you look for the information. Uh, now we have bishop e3, the main idea, bishop e7, rook c1, uh, and now knight e6. So this knight uh, want to, of course, jump to the d4, very natural square uh, for the knight. Uh, and here the main idea would be knight f3, but Levon Aronian went for knight H3. Uh, it wasn't played in the in the top tournaments yet. However, the idea is well known. What White want to do is actually uh, attack the central pawn on e5 uh, and then move the knight uh, to, to f4. So that's the main idea. We have a castle, we have a castle and now knight c6. And here Levon Aronian could actually follow his plan uh, and play something like f4, attacking this Marozzi pawn on e5. Quite annoying pawn. Uh, so what could happen probably is e takes on f4, knight takes on f4 and we even have one game in the database, but it's quite old game, not played by the, by the grandmasters uh, from 1989. So black won, but the engine says it's completely equal position and everything is fine both of the sides of course i can play however levon aronian for some reason um he actually exchanged this bishop light square bishop very important defender of the position of the king so what is the idea he exchanged for the knight and now black gonna have these ugly pawns which can be very easily attacked look at the bishop the bishop uh, focus on c5 and if the knight moves to them to the a4 uh, we gonna have have a triple attack on them on the c5 so is it is it worth actually to you know weaken the position of, of your king uh for the one pawn it's it's you know very very arguable uh, but in my opinion it's a very very risky uh f4 doesn't really work now because if f4 is played uh then black gonna play knight f4 knight f4 and now look at this the bishop is attacking the knight 
So that's the first problem. So knight f4, uh, e takes on f4, bishop f4, and now this bishop uh, gonna go to the to the light squares. All of these light squares are very very weak, uh, and also the queen can attack in the center. The position of the king, uh, very difficult uh, position to defend by by white. So uh, definitely this is not what Levon would like to do now. This is why he played f3, just making a space for the for the knight. Uh, we have now rook b8. So going to them to the open files. So uh, yes, these pawns are ugly, but at the same time, black have this beautiful uh, semi-open files. Uh, maybe the D file is not that great because this pawn is pretty much solid. Uh, however, B file, why not? So we have B3. Uh, and now we have f5 and look at couple of moves what Nepo is going to play now. We have knight f2, we have h5, king h1 and boom g5. Look at this phalanx. Phalanx of the pawns, very solid, five pawns in the in the fifth rank and they gonna roll the position of the king. They, it looks like they come out of nowhere but this is very str strong and very dangerous attack. So we have knight a4, Levon Aronian say okay prove that you can attack, I think I can defend that uh, and also now your pawn is attacked three times, how you gonna defend? Uh, and Nepo said okay I'm gonna defend, you cannot, you don't have more resources to actually attack my pawn so we have rook b5 and now bishop d2 preparing uh, e4 uh, we have g4 now uh, and here very strange but stockfish actually says that e4 is good but first should be prepared so uh, first f takes on g4 and after h takes on g4 only then goes for the e4 and everything is fine for white but what could happen so knight d4 and knight f3 is the very natural plan now so for example bishop e3 knight f3 and now e takes on f5 bishop f5 and look at the position would you like to play this as white with the semi open h file it's very very risky this rook can very easily come to the attack on the h file the queen also can come to the h5 and attack on the on the h file the position together with the knight on f3 extremely dangerous so it's very very strange uh, however you know stockfish calculate a little bit better than me so definitely he understands the position better uh, we have e4 Levon Aronian doesn't uh, like this shenanigans uh, and he strikes e4 immediately uh, and now we have knight d4 pretty natural attacking the pawn now so we have f4 and now if black decide to take this pawn uh, white gonna improve the position of the bishop very solid one and if this pawn and then of course the knight also gonna jump to very beautiful outpost on the on the e4 so this center has to stay for, for a while here uh, and of course now we have knight f3 very beautiful outpost of nepo uh, we have bishop e3 and now h4 preparing the attack the position of the of the white king so we have king g2 anticipating that the rook gonna come to the h1 uh, so Levon Aronian said okay I'm waiting for you if you open the file uh, maybe I'm gonna control the h5 we have queen e8 so fight for the h5 the queen is going to come to the h5 and attack the position of the king uh, and now we have very very complicated position I would like to just show you the engine line here. It's it's crazy, it's crazy, but I want to show what in opinion of Stockfish White can get. This is the maximum what they can get out of this position. So E takes on F5 and after Bishop on F5, look at this, it's pretty crazy. Boom, knight g4, sacrificing the knight temporary because it's a, it's a very interesting sacrifice. So bishop g4 and now h3. So the knight is uh, in the danger. If the bishop goes back to h5, then of course we're gonna have a g4 with the attack on this bishop and also uh, the knight not gonna have the protection. So h takes on g3 uh, and now uh, taking the bishop isn't that great because uh, we're gonna have knight h4 with check so this time uh, actually white have to exchange um, pay the exchange so rook for the two pieces bishop f3 queen f3 and the position is pretty crazy still e takes on f4 bishop f4 and now queen f7 actually the bishop is under attack uh, and now how to continue 
rook c4 defending uh, but black also have rook b4 so uh, following this rook so it's still the problem this is why white would have to play g4 queen g4 and after king h7 then bishop g3 but it's still not the end after rook c4 d takes on c4 uh, black actually gonna have extra exchange but white gonna have this um this passed pawn uh but it's in front of the king not so easy also black have more active pieces uh and after king h2 let's say this knight is a little bit you know on the a4 far from the action so it's pretty dangerous actually for white the the position is rather uh win by black and this is the best what uh, in theory actually white can get from that position however levon aronian said uh, i'm gonna win your pawn so we have bishop c5 uh, we have also bishop c5 knight c5 and now queen h5 as planned so already it starts to be very interesting we have a rook h1 uh, getting with the rook ready on the h file so of course exchanging here isn't that great this is why we have e takes on f4 now attacking the pawn on the g3 twice so we have g takes on f4 now it's not possible to attack the pawn on the g3 uh, but now we have h3 and what to play if you go uh, with the king uh, to, to g3 we're gonna have a checkmate here so that's not possible this is why we have king f1 and now f takes on e4 knight c to e4 and it looks like white already consolidated the position it's it's a very very solid however the rook is is pretty ugly on the h1 so how to bring the rook to the game that's gonna be uh, another topic we have rook f4 and the position starts to be really really crazy rook c6 look at the position of the king is completely exposed here we have bishop b7 attacking the rook and now instead of rook c7 we have boom rook f6 attacking the rook from behind and the point is that the rook cannot take it because we're gonna win the queen very beautiful fork so that's not possible this is why nepo in this position play rook b to f5 and look at this this is one of the weirdest positions ever look at this train it's a train in front of the of the king so it's a lot of uh pieces you know we have white pieces dark pieces white piece at the end it's completely uh, insane uh, so now levon aronian went for another crazy move to complicate it even further knight g3 boom attacking the queen attacking the rook what is going on here what is going on <laughs> do you see can you calculate what is going on here there is only one winning move for black in this position so it's time to pause the video take how much time you want uh nepo found it um, and he had only you know rapid time control but this is just insane one winning move otherwise you're gonna draw or even lose the game so pause the video while i enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so if you think you have to move the queen there is the one huge problem here if you move the queen all the pieces gonna be exchanged so for example rook f5 rook f5 knight f5 uh queen f5 and then queen e2 and everything is is fine yes the rook is still still very very ugly uh but the queen gonna come uh, except king f7 uh but then queen e3 maybe the queen can enter the game this way uh, so maybe uh queen f6 uh, and then after king e2 the rook is free to go of course black is not interested in that so would play probably something like knight d4 with check the knight is of course defended and with the attack on the on the rook so get back the exchange and after king d2 bishop h1 uh, knight h1 now knight f5 let's say queen f4 and this position is equal it's considered as completely equal uh, black can try something like queen b2 very actively uh, but simply king d1 and if black want to win this knight then this knight is hanging as well so probably that would be the draw it would be very very unlikely that any of the players would would win so if you want to move the queen is not the move we are looking for the only move which is winning is moving the knight and black can win with a lot of complications if the knight is moved actually to h4 
but much stronger is actually deliver a check with this knight. Knight d2 and this is completely crushing. Now what is the idea? If white actually takes the knight, there is the one problem. The rook gonna take the knight back. Uh, exchange and after exchanging all the pieces we're gonna have queen c5 this rook is still under attack so if the rook moves then of course we're gonna have queen c1 wins that rook so and, and the game so that's the one of the ideas if not and playing something like rook e2 maybe uh blocking then we still have queen c1 and then the queen goes to the f4 delivering a check so king e2 and now bishop f3 so the king cannot actually escape from this box so have to go back so king f2 bishop d1 a uh, king g1 and now simply queen f3 and delivering the checkmate in the next move or maybe uh, in the next two moves it doesn't really matter uh, this is gonna be the checkmate so in this position queen d2 is not possible Levon Aronian uh, went for king e1 saying now I'm gonna take your queen maybe your rook but here Nepo went for another move boom queen e8 delivering a check and in this position Levon Aronian resigned and why did he resign? Because he gonna lose um, a lot of material. Whatever he play doesn't really matter. If he try to blocks, for example, knight f2 e4, then the problem simply knight e4. Even if white goes for some uh, some extra exchange and take the rook, then also black also can take the rook with the check. So it's extra tempo and you already see, uh, let's say queen e2, just simply exchange. And at the end, uh, black gonna win this um, this rook and the game. Bishop and the, and the rook extra. So blocking doesn't work. What else? Queen e2. This looks pretty much logical, but again, very simple. Queen e2, just exchange everything, knight e2, and now um, take with the rook the knight. Um, this rook has to be exchanged, so rook f5, rook f5, so this rook cannot be taken. And again, we have um, extra rook and, and winning the game, even if the even the rook is under attack, and if the rook moves to the to the f1, is gonna be taken by the by the knight, and so on. Uh, even if rook goes to g1, we still have this four so king f2 knight g1 king g1 and we have extra rook to win the game that's also doesn't work so finally a king d2 what if we have king d2 it also doesn't work because now we have rook f2 taking back the material with check and of course after king c1 taking also the rook and with extra rook is also winning so for example rook e1 uh, but then queen c8 uh, king b1 and so on so this of course is with the extra rook is enough to win the game so this is why after queen e8 in this crazy position uh levon aronian resigned so what the game this was completely completely insane nepo nepo just set up together with levon this crazy chain and uh, and, uh, and yeah as i promise i would like to show you the the knockout bracket what just happened in the quarterfinals magnus carlsen after one he didn't win in the second day uh but he uh have the score two to two so that means he actually advanced to the quarterfinals uh, Levon Aronian couldn't win against Jan Nepomniashi Jan Nepomniashi uh, won a three to one so it was one in one in the mini matches and then um, Nepo won two games uh, in the in the tie breaks uh, and more emotions we had in the Wesley so against Teimur Rajabov Wesley so won and then we had the uh, equal and then we had the Armageddon and in Armageddon Wesley so with the black pieces uh, managed to actually not lose the game and the same happened uh, with Maxim Vashil Lagraf uh, who had to play with the white pieces in the Armageddon against Hikaru Nakamura Hikaru Nakamura hold that and, um, and yeah this is what we have in the semi-finals Magnus Carlsen against Jan Nepomniashi and Wesley so against Hikaru Nakamura so if you don't want to miss other games from that tournament press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one